On this episode of Mind Your Own Business, we meet Todd, a farmer and philanthropist who is feeding his community while looking to break new ground. Canadian entrepreneurs who are looking to build their businesses their way. With me, Kevin Shaw. I live with total sight loss. I'm a serial entrepreneur who loves to build, lead, and inspire. This is Mind Your Own Business. Hi there, and welcome to our show. On this episode, we meet Todd, the founder of River Valley Seeds. Todd is carving out a space for himself as a seed supplier and a community leader. He's looking for help positioning himself as the underdog we can all rally around. I'm Todd DeMerchant from River Valley Seeds, and I'm located at Gaze River, Nova Scotia, that's about 30 minutes north of Halifax. We sell vegetable seeds and flower seeds uh, for basically home growers. I sell them retail to uh, stores, uh, and I sell them online on Shopify. I get the seeds and then I repackage them into the packaging that I have done up in my brand. And um, then I ship them off to the customers. Our seeds are organic seeds. The packaging that we're using is all biodegradable. We're trying to be um, economical for the customers, but also economical for the environment doing that. So we're being very particular on the quality and the, the product itself. The other part of the business is actually farming. We have two acres that we grow vegetables, then we sell them at our market. That's the biggest part of our business. That, that little shed, 10 by eight, it does hold quite a bit of produce, but I was quite surprised how quickly people were coming from the city, uh, from Pictou County, 150 kilometers away, to come and get organic grown uh, produce. And we were selling our vegetables at a dollar a pound. Uh, I don't know anywhere where you can buy organic produce uh, at a dollar a pound. So people were just rushing to get out to buy all our vegetables. In 2004, after uh, getting married to my wife, and moving to Nova Scotia. I fell back to a job that I did back when I was a teenager working in construction. We went to this one site and unfortunately I fell um, around 30 feet, three floors into a basement onto a pile of rocks. You know, I broke my neck in three places, broke my back in five, many bones. It was many years of just sitting in a wheelchair. And it wasn't until about a year and a half, 18 months in, my legs started twitching. Just started twitching in the wheelchair. And we uh, went to a doctor and he said, well, if your leg is twitching, there's a good chance you might be able to walk again. And it took many years. It took like five or six years. And then I started walking short distances and through rehab and walking uh, on a treadmill, just constantly as much as I could to get up. Uh, I'm now able to walk around. It was hard to find a job because of my limitations. So because of those issues, my wife and I said, well, what, what is it that we can do? And then the next following year, we we're like, well, we do have farmland, so why don't we farm it? So with the help of my girls, my wife, we went out and started uh, growing vegetables. The vegetables, the first year that we sold, I think it was around 20,000 pounds that we sold, uh, but we donated about 70,000 pounds to the food bank that year. So every year we do sell, but we also donate to the food bank because it's about giving back to the community. Hi, I'm Lana Larder and I own Larder Marketing Group and I help businesses grow. I started working with Todd about a month ago and I've been helping him, number one, um, package his whole like branding package and as well helping access financing to get his project started. I just love what he's doing because of food insecurity and how it will help our earth and people. I went and did a lot of research and I couldn't believe like food insecurity right across Canada number one 
and the increase in gardening right across Canada, which was incredible for his business. So there's such a huge need for affordable vegetables, basically. I mean, his potential, unbelievable. And what he's doing is such a great concept and how it helps everyone. Currently, I'm marketing myself just basically online through uh, Instagram. The seed business, my plans and uh, my future insight on that is that over the next couple years, I wish to expand so that I will be offering seeds at a retail location. The other expansion that I'm looking to get into is revolving into herbs and spices because the packaging would be the same. The machinery that I'm using to package the seeds is the same. And then I'm also looking into roasting coffee and packaging it and uh, doing up different uh, blends of teas. Because of the little stand here and we've been so busy, uh, it's only a seasonal operation. It's only the vegetables that I've been growing. The plan is to expand into an actual building um, that will be open all year round. And we'll be selling vegetables, our produce, but also we'll be approaching other farmers in Nova Scotia and getting their produce, bringing it in, uh, highlighting their produce with their name on it and selling it through our location. The reason why a lot of my development has been very slow taking place is acquiring funding to put in a building. I think the biggest thing that I need help with is their advice on where I should look for uh, approaching for investors, uh, maybe securing some type of financial uh, loans or even grants. I'm feeling quite excited. Now I'm running into barriers again, but I'm not giving up. I'm always finding another way. And that's the thing with business, whether you're a successful business or you're not. The way to become a successful business is overcoming those barriers. We're back in studio here on Mind Your Own Business and off to my left is one of our Mind Your Own Business mentors, Kelly Johnson. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kevin. So it sounds like Todd is focused on a lot of different things. He's doing coffee, he's doing seeds, he's doing produce. Where does he need to focus? Well, I think his main concern was looking for funding in order to grow. So be interested to see on how he focuses and what he does to overcome that obstacle. I think in addition to that, he's looking at getting a lot of the basics done as well, right? Yeah, the basics, just website, marketing, those kind of things. I think that he can also use the power of his community to get behind him. So I'm really interested to see if, if he's able to get that in hand before applying for funding. We'll talk about that and much more right here on Mind Your Own Business. Kelly will be back with our mentors. And there's much more to come. Don't go anywhere. This is Mind Your Own Business. I'm Karen Wong. I'm a CEO and entrepreneur who has built self-funded businesses from scratch. As a mentor, I help people learn from my wins and mistakes. I'm Kelly Braun Johnson. I'm autistic and hard of hearing, and I'm a business advisor for social enterprises and nonprofits. My name is Chris Goley. I'm founder and CEO of several bootstrap startups. I mentor young entrepreneurs from across Canada. Well, welcome back. We're here in the studio with our mentors, Karen, Chris, and Kelly. And on the line with us from Gays River, Nova Scotia is Todd Demerchant. Hi, Todd. Hi, Kevin. Where are you struggling most with, with your business right now? My, the biggest thing that I'm struggling with is reaching out and getting funding to put in a building and a warehouse for our seed production. Chris, I'm going to let you take it from here as social enterprise is close to your heart. Yeah, Todd, I, I got to tell you, I, I love social enterprises like what you're doing. And certainly with food insecurity, um, you know, the, the contributions to food banks and, and uh, making sure that it's affordable for people. It's fantastic. I, I love that part of, of your business. When you're talking about the building side, I'm just wondering if you're, you've kind of thought about taking that same social initiative with the building construction and, and the cost there. And so I'm, I'm thinking working with other producers in the area and getting them to form kind of a cooperative around that, uh, you know, so they're, they're invested in that space just as much as you are. Yeah, that's something that uh, we were looking to do. It's not just sell our produce, but to reach out to other 
uh, farmers and sell their uh, products also. Um, but it does bring up a good point. It would be nice to have a co-op scenario where people can invest into the company, the construction of the uh, building, and take ownership of that property itself, and then they feel more invested into it, and they will produce more of their produce. And uh, yeah, it, it would really make a impact an impact with the community. Kelly, I'm going to throw it to you. So we were talking about um, looking for funding, but building that consistency of income, and of course you have a very seasonal um, kind of business. Have you considered doing something like having subscription baskets where people would take the whatever is in season, whatever is fresh, and you would be able to drop off those baskets at a drop-off point and, and get those, those food into the hands of the people at a, at a good price? but it's a way of, of keeping that consistency of income with a subscription. That is uh, one of the models that we are looking to expand into, is not just sell the produce and other farmers' goods at our retail location, but there are people at uh, distances or have issues coming to our location that we're looking to expand boxes to uh, bring that to a social uh, community location, let's say, a uh, library or a parking lot. And how about with the the seeds and your website? Um, how is that going for you? Currently, we're in a uh, website uh, upgrade right now. So um, the seed side of it is very minimal right now, but we're looking to expand and start selling more. Um, once we get a building, we will be able to produce our scared excuse me produce more seed packets and then sell more. So we're doing it at a very small scale, just based on the resources that we don't have the room to bring in tons and tons of seeds to pack. Uh, so I need to have the warehouse up and running first before I can start selling them at a uh, faster and uh, bigger quantity. Okay, and a great stopgap measure in the meantime while the website's being revamped and, and, and made is to use something like Google My Business so that people can still at least find you, know that you're still active. Um, Google My Business is free to set up. It doesn't take very much time. So that could be a good option for you as well. What about things like Facebook, Instagram, that kind of thing? Absolutely. If you're, if you're comfortable on Facebook, Instagram, um, or you have people who, are, who, who want to kind of tweet or, or put social posts out about what they're getting, um, that can be another way also to raise ex excitement. If, if you're doing something like that subscription box, um, people can start posting on Instagram, hey, look what I got. This week I got, I don't know, two heads of lettuce and some tomatoes. This is fantastic. Um, that's another way you can use that momentum, and it's, and it's also free. Karen, I'm going to ask you to take your operations hat off and put your finance hat on. <laughs> Well, I'm still going to talk a little bit about operations. So um, I'm sure you're doing a lot of planning, Todd. You obviously have uh, all these plans about the building, the warehouse. But have you prepared any type of formal business plan uh, for the investors that, you, that you've been looking to talk to? Yes, I do have a uh, business plan and uh, an executive summary and all the numbers and everything's been lined up quite uh, well. It's very neat put together quite you mentioned having talked to investors. Are there any other organizations you've talked to for, for financing? Yes, I've reached out to the, the banks themselves, uh, credit union. Uh, I've reached out to um, different financial institutions. There has to be some kind of government funding for the kind of work that Todd is doing, right? Yep, for sure. And that's what I was going to, to recommend. We're all aligned here. It sounds like you could do a little bit more right now to, to look at the co-op opportunity. You want to make sure that's included in, for example, your forecast. If you are able to get a couple other farmers to the table, that obviously is, there's power in numbers. And then, of course, on the marketing side, it is very important to have that presence online so that you can show them you have credibility, you know what you're doing, you have those processes to really grow uh, when that market, farmer's market is up and running. Um, once you get all of that, have your ducks in a row, you should reach out to the government concierge. They have, uh, FedDev has a program where they will help you and help connect you to the different funding programs. For, for rural, there's actually, I think there's one under Ministry of Agriculture and also even Rural Affairs. 
So this way you can at least get an in um, with the assistance of the concierge service, but it is kind of a one-shot thing, right? So you want to make sure you are ready for that and you've really reviewed the numbers um, and that you have everybody and every stakeholder you can get behind you when you make that call. That's why I've got to focus now on the website, um, the Shopify site, and social media to make sure that there is a presence and I can put everything all together in one basket and deliver it. Because like you said, you got one shot. What I love about your business, Todd, is that you're the underdog and everyone loves to support the underdog and you've got a fantastic story and I think it's something that people can really rally around. But I'm gonna start with Karen. What does, what does Todd need to do in the next 60 days? I would say get those decks in a row. Um, obviously find out more information about those programs anyway, so that you're ready to make the call and then obviously follow the advice of the other mentors. Chris, how about you? Start working that co-op angle. Talk to other producers, get them on board with your, your idea. Um, you know, when you are ready to apply for funding, having, you know, like we said power in numbers, right? It, it actually looks better when you're applying and you're a community coming forward uh, with a, a, a business proposition. That looks great. Um, and um, part of that will also be uh, telling that narrative around the, the community impact uh, because governments are much more likely to fund projects that will benefit the community um, in, in the long run. So uh, make sure that that's part of the story that you're, you're preparing. And carving out a space for yourself as a community leader, Todd. I was gonna say, you can use social media to get your community behind you. You've given so much to everyone. You need to call on those people now to come and back you up. What's the 60 day challenge for Todd, Kelly? I think that's really it. Use social media, use that power and say, look, here's what we've done in the community. Share that story again. And, uh, you know, maybe you might get some people behind you backing you. And we, we said strength in numbers. Yeah. Um, that looks really great in terms of just supporting that whole farmer's market. It's not just for the farmers that are going to be there, but realizing that the community can also play a part in making that happen for you. Todd, what are your thoughts on the mentor's advice? My focus was finding the funding, not getting the aspect of the website and looking at incorporating uh, the farmer's co-op until everything was up and running. I should actually now be focused on that aspect before I reach out for funding. Thanks for telling us all about it on Mind Your Own Business. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate it. We'll be back to see how Todd does in the next 60 days. There's still much more to come right here on Mind Your Own Business. Don't go anywhere. This is Mind Your Own Business. When we first met Todd at his farm, River Valley, he was getting his hands dirty, striving to find a bumper crop of cash to make his business flourish. Did the mentors provide enough sunshine to help his farm grow? We caught up with Todd to find out. Joining us by video conference, Todd from River Valley Seeds. Hi, Todd. Hi, it's nice to meet you again. How have things been going over the past uh, two, three months with River Valley Seeds? There has been a development. I have received funding. Um, now with that, um, I need to look at getting my warehouse and market built. If that's not able to happen, I will take the seed business and uh, rent a space somewhere and start packaging. There's probably a really incredible opportunity here to combine what's going on with building a warehouse and building a market and uh, building a greenhouse all in one. Is, is that something you're thinking about? Yeah, exactly. So what I'm looking to do is have one side of the building as uh, basically a warehouse production area for packaging the seeds and the other part of the warehouse, I'm going to be roasting coffee and teas and then packaging those. So it's going to be a production area with uh, probably anywhere between five to 10 employees, depending on uh, the growth of that. And the other part of the building is going to be a traditional farmer's market. We talked a little bit with the mentors about co-op opportunities. Is, is this something that would be a part of this? What I'm looking to do is uh, bring in a few people, growers, and have them bring in their goods so that they can sell them uh, year round at this location. The other thing I'm looking at doing is doing uh, home deliveries through Uber delivery. And so people can pack, uh, 
pick their groceries that they want and have them delivered. We talked also about uh, just sharing your story on social media and, and some of your accomplishments. Has there been any movement on that over the past two, three months? I've been focusing on getting the funding, but right. um, I will be looking at hiring uh, someone to do my social media website mm -hmm. design, e-commerce site. And where do things go next for River Valley Seeds in the next six months to a year? I see in the next six months to a year, getting the market up, um, start selling uh, my seeds and coffee. Um, and then what I'm looking to do is by next fall, set up a uh, teaching area so that people can come in and learn how to grow the plants, take care of them, see what different plants are. So it's a training area. Well, I wish you continued success with River Valley Seed. Thank you so much for coming in and telling us about it on Mind Your Own Business. Thank you for having me. Well, Todd's story reminds us all that every business starts with the tiniest seed of an idea. We certainly wish Todd well and hope that he continues to enjoy the fruit of his labor. If you want to find out more about Todd and River Valley Seeds, go to rivervalleyseeds.ca. Well, that's our show. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, don't forget to water the seeds of the entrepreneurs in your life. Mind your own business. And remember, success comes in a can. Failure comes in a can not. Producers, Nick Appleton, Tyler Cameron, Kevin Kincaid, Kevin Shaw. Editor, Rod Christie. Director of Photography, Kevin Wong. Audio, Mike Merton. Integrated Described Video Consultant, Ron Rickford. President and CEO, David Arrington. Apple Orchard Productions. Copyright 2023. AMI. Accessible Media Inc. An AMI original production.